That was Barguana. That was Barguana had a huge moment. It's rolled. Oh, it's a Bundy car. No, it's not. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. One of the Bundaberg Red Races has gone over. That's going to bring out the safety car, and that was a shocker. Can't work out which one it is. It's, it's 24. It's Fabian Coulthard. Driver is out. Just stand by, safety car. Cool. Standing by. Well, it's very pleasing that he's been able to get out of that car and walk away. I mean, that car has just disintegrated. But the roll cage has done the job That's because Fabian been. has jumped out. That's about all it is working in there at the moment. Here it is again. Why? Just on the bottom left of screen, oh, just stepped out. I reckon the tyres yeah, would go. I reckon if, we, if yeah. we go back to the very beginning of that replay, the left rear tyre has done something bizarre there, right at the point of load. Powers down, Bright seems to have got the jump as round two gets underway. Paul Radisic shot across there as well. This will be interesting into turn one and they've already gone off. Oh, that's an incredible smash to start this race. The Valvoline Cummins Commodore and they're all over the shot. Six or seven cars have gone completely off. That is an amazing start. Well, Jason Barguana in his most competitive outing for a long time. He didn't get more than 100 metres off the start. He's got out of the Valvoline Cummins car. Gives a wave to the crowd, but that's the second time Jason Barguana has crunched that tyre wall on the pit straight. We saw him in trouble in the rain a couple of years back. Keep your eyes on the left-hand side of the screen. The Shell Helix Ford is covering him at the moment. All of a sudden, Barguana gets squeezed out to his right. Wham! Upside down to start round two. Well, he got tapped by another car. I couldn't see which one it was in the pack there. Just underneath the Dunlop sign, they've gone through there. Keep your eyes on the two cars at the right of the track. Greg Murphy is behind, Jason Barguana is in front, and from this point on, Barguana becomes a passenger in this 600 horsepower car, and it's heading straight for the wall. Yeah, the interesting thing too, when you just look up in front of where Barguana hits, here he comes now, drills the bank, rolls it over. Barguana and Jason, uh, and Greg Murphy, just about coming to blows in pit lane. Hey, I'll do it again. Temperatures at boiling point. Winkup can choose where he wants to be on the racetrack. And there's lots of congestion in the mid-pack, as you expect back here. And trouble for Dick Pasquale and big trouble for Van Gisberg. And this is what we talked about. Kelly's tangled up in this as well. LeBrock is in there. Jones is in there. Goddard is in there. Heimgartner is in there. So the typical mess of turn two. Unbelievable presence of mind for Scott McLaughlin to turn back on the inside of Dick Pasquale. And here's the on-board from Shane. So he's left room, that's important. He's left room, now bang. So he got served and then served into Padik Pasquale. Rick Kelly, outside turn two, and then getting caught up in everybody else's Nowhere. shot. Nowhere to go. Fourth on the outside is Caruso. He's got a wall of Red Bull cars trying to sneak underneath, including Winko. Oh. There's contact between Winko and Caruso. That can be ill afforded at this early part. Exactly. Oh, he's got he's, got he's, got he's in the fence on the right-hand side. Now, that will be as a result of that contact. Broken, Broken steering. steering. Now, that is going to be... Oh, no, no. It's a wrong contact. Dale Wood, Taz Douglas, Jason Bright and Tim Blanchard. Trouble at turn eight. What do you want to do? Serve a shame or me? Street circuit chaos. Bright gets around. This is a big story. We're riding with Jamie, so just focus on this. Contacts left rear wheel. He thought may have been on based on the battle between Shane Van Gisbergen and Michael, and it wasn't on. And that's done serious damage to that right front corner of car number 88. And then he's run wide as he got further down short on Esplanade. That's right. So this was the reason for the safety car. There's the damaged car 88. In fact, Dave was quite nice to him. How's that? Heimgarten has got down the inside. Oh, he has not got down the inside of Shane Van Gisbergen. I thought it was done. He ended, and there's more trouble on the exit. 
Courtney's in strife. Winterbottom's in yeah, strife. How did James sneak across the front of everybody and not get T-boned? Unbelievable. We'll have to try to unravel this for you, folks, because that's a lot of damage to Mark Winterbottom's goal. Let's see what happens here. So looking back in the pack, we see that Heidgartner makes a move, but then as Shane turns to try and make the corner, he gets the rear of Andre's car. But I don't understand what occurred up the back here. We're riding with Frosty. This, oh, OK. Ah, uh, so LeBron got involved with, I might have been with Papali. How's this for a whack up? So there's the turnaround. He'll be in a bit of strife for that one. And then it, just in behind that lunacy, so check this out. That checks them all up. So Cam Waters and McCauley run to the inside. That was David Reynolds with LeBrock. And then the spin. Oh, that was so close, wasn't it? I thought for all money, Courtney was going to get whacked then. So Reynolds, yeah, when they all check up, they're all expecting to accelerate out of the corner. This is James' viewpoint. It's Skittles at Tail and Ben. six cars on the front straight here one down. upside down great good to see him out ricky taylor this is how it started have a look at the fujitsu commodore it slows down so then that was immediate contact lewitsi into the back there's Pagano into the back of him he flicks to the other side ricky taylor ends up making contact with the front of the Irwin falcon and then turns on its roof that just shows how fast the cars are in such a short period of time. That's right, this is one and a half ton of V8 supercar. Now watch this. You watch car 33 come right in the middle, up, over, spin, collects the wall. And Ricky Taylor, in the space of just 100 metres or so in a V8 supercar. Ryan Briscoe did a really good job to miss. Will Power did an amazing job to miss the back of Hinchcliffe. You have a look where... Ryan Briscoe is right now. And that's Sarah's and also did a fantastic job to not run into Ricky Taylor. So Mostert switches to the other side of the road. It's McLaughlin over Mostert. One of the Red Bull cars running very wide through turn one. Macaulay Jones turned around. And there's another car involved in that. It's Thomas Randall. So Jones and Randall pointing in the wrong direction at turn one. The order is McLaughlin, Mostert, Dick Pasquale and Winterbottom. Heimgartner did a beautiful job. He's up to fifth. That was a great opening stanza into that little chicane at turn one and two. And look at this is on for young and old down into turn six. Is there contact? Yes, there is. And Davison's around. There's going to be other cars. Simona's in it. Hazelwood's in it. That was a lazy contact there with Rick Kelly. The bonnet's now up on Hazelwood's car. Huge damage to the front of that car and Simona's. As you can see, Simona now off the road. And so really all this stuff downstream of what happened there and a lot of damage, unfortunately, on the front of that new Newland car for Todd Hazelwood. Huge damage on the front also for Simona Di Silvestro. The Team Harvey Norman entry. And this is the view from Will Davison's car. So walking wounded back to the pit lane. On the outside there is Michael Caruso, car 34. Over the rise for the first time. Jason Bright carries some. Oh, big contact. Caruso and Bright, they go spearing off down at seven. Major damage. Well, that was all a bit silly. Three cars wide. Made the move down the inside, and Van Gisbergen was the one caught up in it all. Now, three cars wide here. And Murph was the man in the middle. Greg Murphy caught in the middle. That was just extraordinary to see Michael Caruso come spearing into there at top speed. Well, what, one thing's for sure is that Murphy in the middle can't do anything. Yeah. He, he's got nowhere to go. Move by Garth. Right now is the time to make play. 
close as if you can. Bright's been elbowed and round goes Slay. It's taken Bright with him and into the wall goes David Wall. Oh, this is big. Oh. That's Steve Fiore up on the side. It's one of the ultimates there. That's Russell Engel involved with Alex Premer. They're all in the fence. This will be safety car. May even be red flagged. Red flag. That was going to be Red flag, red flag. Six cars at least involved in this. In the Team BOC, car number eight. He gets pushed wide. That's the first sign of danger. Scott McLaughlin's in the middle of that one. Then it clicks up on Tim Slade on the left. He gets fired across. David Wall's got nowhere to go. And then it's just sandwich time. So Tanda shot down the inside and then there was basically three into two. Didn't go with Slade, Bright. It was a Tanda. and Scape at the front row of the grid. Tanda and Bright between them. It is neck and neck for the first 10, 20, 50 metres. Down to turn one, crunch time. Ambrose is holding on. Scape is stuck out on the right. Bright goes really wide. And Ambrose shoots through. Tanda. Scape was held up high. He raced Ambrose all the way to the corner, but that became a perfect invitation for Garth Tander, who moves up a spot. Richards is up to fourth as well in car 11, and Kelly's been turned hard into the wall. That will be huge damage to the right-hand side of that car, very likely to prompt a safety car, rip the wheel off the car as well. Heavy contact for Kelly. We hope he's OK. Let's have a look up at the back of the pack here. And what has happened, you can't really actually it could be that Lowndes and Kelly made contact.